Elden Ring throws you out in the wilds without holding your hands too much, something that players like me come to appreciate, but it also means you could miss out on some very strong or otherwise useful items early on. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the best weapons, items, and upgrades that you won't want to miss when starting out playing. By the way, there's still time for you to take part in our two Elden Ring giveaways for this month, and you can find the links down below. For the first one, I'll give a huge shout out to Instant Gaming as they helped me set this up, and you can choose either Elden Ring or any other game from the list of games over there. Or you can simply buy it much cheaper if you're impatient from the same website I've been using Instant Gaming for ages and they never let me down. Coming up to number one, you should not forget about the keepsakes when creating your characters, as they can provide some nice bonuses or other stuff at the start of the game and you can see what each of these does right now on the screen. But the best one in the long run is definitely going to be the Golden Seed. This gives you a permanent extra sacred flask that you can unlock lock at any nearby site of grace. There's actually a second golden seed that you can find early on in the game, located here in Stormhill on your way to the castle. You will see it by this tree over here and you can go ahead and simply pick it. And between these two golden seeds you can access 6 total flasks at the start of the game instead of just 4 as it is usual and then you can allocate them however you want to. Now obviously there's other options too, another popular one is the Crimson Amber Medallion which slightly increases your HP and by slightly I really mean it, it's barely a fingernail of extra HP, which is why I personally always go with the golden seed. Moving on to number 2, let's talk about crafting tools. When you reach the church area very early on in the game, make sure you also go ahead and buy the crafting tools from this vendor. And this opens up crafting, which gives you a ton of benefits. At first, you're only going to get access to some fire resist potions, which are very useful fire bombs and some throwing darts, but you'll eventually want to go ahead and buy these crafting books, all three of them. They do cost a bit, but you get access to a ton of cool stuff, including arrows for some of the characters that might start with a longbow, like for example the samurai. They also give you access to some other items that will let you coat your weapons with fire for example and other consumables, but for the arrows specifically these are extremely useful, even more so when you consider the nearby area of the church is filled with wild beasts that you can go ahead and just kill for the bones so that you can turn all of them into arrows. Now moving on to number 3, also early on in the game you're going to reach Gatefront, which is kinda like this enemy camp of sorts that is an amazing source of early on items and upgrades. One of them is going to be the Spectral Steed Mount, upon reaching the side of Grace right next to the camp you're going to get the mount by default. And this is going to be your main way of travel on the map, it's super fast, can double jump and even ride air current, but it's most important at mounted combat. You're going to have a lot of trouble early on with some of the encounters, while mounted combat will make it way easier, especially for some of the melee classes in the game. And another added advantage is the fact that you don't have to worry about your weight while on horseback, so you can pretty much equip anything, get the stats and then take things down super fast. This is also when the game teaches you about map fragments, which is the only way to reveal parts of the map in Elden Ring. Approaching the glowing monument right here in the middle of the camp will give you the first local area map which is otherwise greyed out. And every time you're going to be in a new zone, look for these indications on the map that resemble that same monument, as this is going to be the place you will want to visit and grab the item that will unlock that part of the map. And this is going to be for the overwhelming majority of the zones in Elden Ring throughout the entire game. Now there's also going to be some items in the same area that you will definitely want to pay attention to. Two weapons including a great sword and a flail. The great sword can be found in the cart closest to the site of grace, guarded by an enemy but should be otherwise easy to acquire. It's a great early on weapon for strength based melee classes like the hero or the vagabond and it mostly scales up to strength so it's going to be quite awesome as it also deals a ton of damage. The flail can also be acquired from the second cart just outside the outskirts of the camp and it scales up with dexterity in case you're starting up with a warrior or other similar classes. An even more important item that drops within the same camp is going to be the brass shield and this has a chance to drop from the enemies that carry the golden looking shields. You'll have to farm for these for a few minutes but luckily the side of grace nearby can give you a quick reset of the fight and if you just farm these eventually you should see it dropping. What makes the brass shield so amazing is the fact that it's one of the first starting shields 
shields that gives you a 100% physical damage block, making it a much better starting option than your shields that your class comes with. And of course, you can refarm the same enemies as they will drop exactly what you see equipped on them. Like for example, the Lord Swarm shield and the swords are dropped by the enemies that have those big shields upon them. And also you can get their armors, assuming that you farm them enough, but obviously that brass shield was the most important. Now this brings us to number 4, which are the Ashes of War. And in the same gatefront camp, there's going to be a final item that you will want to get, which is going to be the Whetstone Knife and the Ashes of War from this chest inside of the cellar from the same camp. Now the Whetstone Knife is the most important here because it will let you apply and even switch out Ashes of War on your certain items. Think of these as special skills and affinities that you can apply to your weapons and shields as these will give you interesting new abilities or even scale up your certain stats. For example, Heavy Ashes of War in this case will scale up your strength, giving you a lot more but at the detriment of dexterity and there's other obvious choices for dexterity or other stats as well. Now if you want to get some great early on Ashes of War, definitely go ahead and head over to the War Master Shack, the north side around the forest area right here on this side of the map. Burnal here will give you quite a few options to pick from but personally I went with the one that gives you the upward cut for some of your weapons. It's a heavy Ashes of War, it scales up with strength which in this case was amazing for my hero but there's obviously other options in there costing anywhere between 600 to 1200 runes and yeah there's options for dexterity based characters too. Now if you're a spellcaster instead don't worry as there's some early on options for you as well in the spells department. First of all make sure you grab the spirit wolf ashes the second time you visit the church in the starting area. Simply go there again after maybe you cleared up the gate front area and you're going to meet up Rena and she's going to give you access to the spirit call bell as well as the wolf spirits. This is going to pretty much give you the option to like just do summons in general but specifically the wolf spirits are the strongest early on in the game. They provide a lot of damage, a means of distraction and even quite a lot of stagger build up. This is something that you should do for any class, it doesn't matter if you're a spellcaster or not, this is something that you can get for all of them. But for sorcery specific there's actually a vendor that you can purchase quite a lot of spells from early on and it's going to be located right here by the side of the road onto a place called the Waypoint Ruin. You have to defeat an enemy inside of the cellar but once you've done that you're going to be able to open up this door at the back of the room. Once inside you're going to meet up a new character and she's going to give you access to quite a number of spells including the two ones that the astrologer starts with at the beginning of the game. They do cost way more than the Ashes of War so about 3000 which also brings us to number 6 and the final point on the list. If you don't have enough runes at the start of the game then you're in luck because there's a nearby moving caravan that gives you at least 2500 runes per run and access to an amazing starting weapon. Simply check out the road next to the ruin and it's impossible to miss out these two oversized ogres carrying a cart. Since they're tied down they are also easy targets and you can pick them off and upon killing them you will get about 1000 or so runes for each one of them. Clearing out the small fry will also provide a few hundred more so you can already have almost enough to afford one of the spells at the same shop. Also don't forget about the great axe in the back of the cart because this is an amazing strength based weapon that will be really awesome for some of the melee classes in the game. And this is pretty much it with most if not all of the starting items that I definitely recommend not missing out on. If I missed anything myself let me know in the comments and I'll see you guys in the next one.